Hello all of you wonderful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and I am back to fill your ear holes with my warm verbal goo as it is time for another Sermon on the Mount about video game bosses. I love talking about bosses because from a game design perspective they're utterly fascinating, acting as challenges for the player or ways to change up the gameplay entirely or just to be cheap as hell little punks that you'd want to drown in a pool given half the chance. And of course there have been a lot of bosses that absolutely spanked your bottom from here to kingdom come. But we we always seem to focus on the golden oldies like Mike Tyson or General from Kaiser Knuckles, side note, this guy. So instead today we're going to look at more recent games, or at least those this side of the 2010s, that utterly ruined us. So with this in mind, I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 recent video game bosses who destroyed players. Number 10, Azazel, Tekken 6. The final boss of Tekken 5, Jin Pachi, has a reputation for being one of the most unfair bosses in any fighting game, and thanks to his unblockable moves and cheap combos, players were tearing their hair out while trying to battle him. Or in my case, tearing up my beard. Seriously, I looked like I had mange by the end of it. And yet, somehow Tekken 6 made things even worse, as now the final boss, Azazel, fills the entire screen and it's now impossible to dodge its attacks. In most fighting games, you need to rely on heavy combos to defeat such a foe, but this simply doesn't work with Zazzy because it's able to break your chains, basically stating that that is boring, lol, and then punching your liver right up your windpipe. It also has a nasty habit of spamming an attack where crystals shoot out at the very floor, meaning that even if you're blocking, this move will rip you to shreds unless you're crouching. Good. Great. Luckily, you can use its size as an advantage and mid-attack it while it's on the floor, but getting this boss down to that state is no mean feat in itself. Number 9. Super Tyrant – Resident Evil 2 Remake The 2019 remake of Resident Evil 2 was a very welcome entry to the franchise. The graphics, the performances, the gameplay, oh, they were all simply top-notch. But arguably the best bit is when you realise that Mr. X is coming for you and he will never tire. Well, unless you dip into a safe room, but let's ignore that for the moment. As the hulking tyrant slowly trudges towards your character, you have to decide whether to face him or run away, and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with this paper mache faced mutant is not going to end well for you. However, as we said, running is always an option, and for the most part, it works pretty well. That is, until you're forced to face him one-on-one -on -one at the end of Leon's campaign. And it is rough. You have barely any space to move, he's got an instant kill attack, and he hits hard. In order to beat this super foe, you'll have to steal your nerve and blast that exposed heart to pieces. And you know what? Good luck, my friends. Number 8. Calamity Ganon – The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Ganon, the big bad pig lad, is the primary antagonist throughout much of the Zelda franchise, and yet he's always dispatched by some scrub in a tunic, which has done a fair bit to damage his evil reputation. Although, to be fair, said tunic wearer is at those points overpowered to all hell thanks to all the side questing, but I digress. So imagine our surprise when Calamity Ganon not only puts up a bit of a fight, but absolutely schooled a lot of players on their first few runs at him. Even if you have the strongest armor and maximum hearts, Ganon can kill you in two strikes, so you'll need to constantly heal as he unleashes lasers, flames and sword swipes, which as you can imagine, isn't exactly easy. When you stun him, you'll have but seconds to slash the crap out of him before he recovers, so don't even think about facing him until you have the Master Sword. It is possible to beat him before this point, but why you'd want that headache is beyond me. Number 7. The Undertaker WWE 2K14 the Undertaker has gone by many names during his time in the WWE. The Dead Man, the American Badass. Mark, okay, that one is just his real name. He's known for his towering height, surprising agility, booming voice, devastating moves, and commanding presence. However, he's best known for winning 21 WrestleMania matches in a row. And so, to celebrate this achievement, WWE 2K14 has a mode called The Streak, where you can fight 21 opponents as the legendary wrestler. Or if you're feeling suicidal, you can pick another character and fight an OP Undertaker, and this version of the Phenom is leagues above any other the wrestler since he can reverse or counter almost any move in an instant. And also, he bloody cheats. If you try to pin him, sometimes the lights will go out and when they turn back on, he's right behind you ready to hit you with a tombstone pile driver. Oh, that seems fair, doesn't it? And so even the most die-hard fan will sometimes end these matches cursing his very name. Number 6. Boulder, Bayonetta 2 
Throughout Bayonetta 2, the ridiculously over-the-top titular character constantly clashes with this angel called Balder, and as Balder grows weary of Bayonetta's interference, he decides to end her life once and for all. He has ridiculous combos, lethal charging attacks, and can launch a dozen blades at the player with no warning. Plus, you have to keep constantly moving during the brawl because he can summon lightning and swords from the heavens that lock onto your position. Oh, cheers, mate. That's good. Due to Boulder's enormous peacock-like wings, he actually looks much bigger than he is. However, hitting these wings causes no damage, and trust me, you'll be glad I told you that, otherwise you'll probably waste a ton of time hitting thin air. And as you might expect from someone with wings, the player will be forced to take most of the fight to the air, making it harder to perform effective combos. Now please, I love having one of the game's biggest features reduced to aerial spams that may or may not even hit. Mmm, good, thanks, cheers. Number 5. Lingering Will – Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix Lingering Will, more like losing my f***ing will to live, Jesus Christ, this secret boss in Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix is tough, as not only does it have an insane health pool, but also is nearly impossible to pin down and hit. Imagine using up as much magical power as possible to unleash your most devastating attack, only for this sentient suit of armor to dodge it by teleporting away. Boo! Boo! The crowd hates that! And I feel sorry for you if you're locked on when he starts dashing from side to side, as that motion sickness is gonna kick in real strong, brother. This is a boss that you can't just rock up with the best gear and hope for the best. You have to have impeccable strategy and timing. And when I tell you that I play Orcs in Warhammer 40k, then you know that I have neither of those qualities. Number 4. Morgan Freeman, South Park, The Fractured But Whole In the 2014 game South Park Stick of Truth, you can fight former US Vice President Al Gore as a secret boss, and it was through this fight that Gore's cheap tactics gained him a reputation as one of the most difficult bosses in recent games. When the developers made the sequel South Park, The Fractured But Whole, they devised a boss which made Al Gore look like a walk in the bloody park, as in this game you can find Oscar-winning actor Morgan Freeman in his restaurant, Freeman Tacos. If you repeatedly punch him, he will challenge you to a brawl, and it doesn't matter how prepared you are, as even if you're armed with every weapon, shield, and potion in the game, Freeman is a nightmare to fight. His HP is 9,999, meaning that your most powerful moves are only going to be like throwing the deck chairs off the bloody Titanic, in that it's still going to be a f***ing disaster either way. Plus, at about halfway through the scrap, Freeman will start taking two turns in a row, causing double damage. So if that sounds like a laugh to you, then go ahead, because honestly, you're a sadist. Number 3. Master Fortress – Super Smash Bros. for Wii U not only is the final boss of Super Smash Bros. for Wii U rock hard, but you need to complete certain criteria to even face it, and in this case that means getting to the end of the single player with a 9.0 rating. So doing this will likely make you feel like you're ready for any challenge, right? WRONG! GOOD DAY, SIR! As Master Fortress will slap your chubby little boy boobies and make all of the other kids laugh at you. There are six phases to this fight. Six. And to even hurt this boss, you need to attack its core, which you can't see because it's covered in a shroud. After defeating the first five incarnations, you must then traverse a level-sized death trap called the Master Fortress to destroy the core. And the fortress is laced with acid and projectile-firing enemies, which can kill you in one hit. No, please, take my dignity. I don't need it. Number 2. Grim Matchstick – Cuphead of all of the difficult bosses in Cuphead, the one that tends to trip players up the most is this dastardly dragon Grim Matchstick. Now, usually I put King Dice here because arguably he's a tougher fight, but to even get to that cube-based C word, you need to get past this dong of a dragon. Since these clouds that you're on as platforms move towards the overgrown lizard, you'll need to keep jumping away to avoid smashing into him. And, as you have to jump in the opposite direction that you're shooting at, that means that you'll have to use the left and right part of your brain at the same time, which can be more than a little confusing. Although the first two stages aren't that bad, Matchstick gains an extra two heads in his final form, meaning that he will be shooting triple the amount of projectiles that he did at the start. And in this phase, you'll have to avoid shooting his fireballs, or they'll split into four mini fireballs, which are very difficult to dodge. I know, right? Unfortunately, there's another thing that you have to worry about as well. The background. Because of every design the developers could have chosen, they decided that the background should be filled with white clouds. As a result, it's easy to mistake a cloud in the background for a cloud that you can jump on, meaning that the player will likely fall to their death many, many times during this bout. And number 1. Sans Undertale 
If you refuse to spare any enemy in Undertale, then this little bone boy called Sans will challenge you to a fight, and when I say fight, I actually mean the most relentless onslaught in the history of gaming. It doesn't feel like a boss fight, it feels like a bloody punishment. As on the first playthrough, almost no gamer will survive his first move, as it bombards you with a barrage of attacks with no warning. And guess what? If you survive, that's only his first attack. It only gets harder. In this seven-minute duel, Sans will come at you with hundreds of attacks, some of which can theoretically kill you ten times over. And you can't just memorize his fighting pattern, since some of his moves are in random order as well, and sometimes he'll telegraph one move before suddenly changing his mind. It's almost as if you need precognition to know what he's going to do next, and that, and that is not something that the average player will have, I can imagine. And there we go, those were 10 recent video game bosses who absolutely destroyed players. I hope that you enjoyed that, my friends, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. And if you want to chat to me further about video games, wrestling, TV, films, comics, whatever, brother, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. We detailed today a lot about video game bosses who absolutely spanked our little bot bots. And you know what? That can actually be quite a good metaphor for life, can't it, really? Sometimes we'll go up against stuff that just really is unfair to the nth degree. But you know what, my friends? I just want to say to you right now that it is okay. We will all go up against struggles in our lives at some point or another, but just remember, you are not alone throughout any of this. Friends, family, professionals in the support industry, all of us care about you and want you to do well. So take a break, be kind to yourself, don't let the video game boss that is life school you so hard that you cry to your mum and ask for an extra Dairyly Lunchable. You won't get it, she hasn't gone to the shops yet. So have a little chill, have a refocus and talk to people, start that dialogue if you can. And then go out there and absolutely smash at your big ledge. As always, I've been Jules. You have indeed been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.